We are broadcasting live from Build America Mutual in the Financial District in Manhattan. Joining us now, I'm really looking forward to finding out how messed up our cybersecurity <laughs> protections are in our municipalities. Joining us to talk about that is Jonathan Cooch. He's Hector Cybersecurity Expert for Threat Quotient, as well as David McIntyre, Build America Mutual Chief Information Security Officer, which we uh, learned was CISO. Uh, yes, we did. Pronounced as CISO, not anything else. Uh, so, Jonathan, I want to start with you, the idea of just how big a threat the cybersecurity issue is on financial terms to municipalities. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, the the ransomware uh, area has really grown to be a billion dollar and billions of dollars business uh, around the world. I mean, there there is so much money. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the people that are going out and doing this look at it as a business. You know, they're investing money in these technologies to go and send out ransomware to other companies, and they're looking to get a return on, on that investment that they put in there. So from their perspective, it is a business. They're, they're launching ransomware, and then they're trying to get money back from it. And so it really is bi- billions of dollars. As far as how much it would cost for any given municipality really depends on whether they know what they have in their hands or not. Uh, a lot of times, you know, if they find out that it, that it is a city, a municipality, a healthcare facility, something else like that, they will try and draw as much money from that as possible. Uh, they're not going to go for the, you know, five, ten thousand dollars that maybe just an individual user or a small co- company might go for. They're going to try and draw as much money out of it as possible. So, Dave, as you kind of look at issuers uh, from the Build America Mutual perspective, what are you finding out there in the marketplace? Are the issuers on the municipal level? up the snuff as it relates to cybersecurity? I think they're getting there. Uh, There's been a lot of attention to this. Um, You know, municipalities really need to learn some basic cyber hygiene. Uh, They need to learn to update their systems. They need to teach people not to click on links and emails. Uh, They need to do good backups, uh, offline backups. Uh, And then uh, they're much safer. You know, as an insurer, we look at short and long-term risks. So there's always a risk that uh, a system could be damaged that would allow uh, a town to pay their debt service on a bond, for instance. Um, and hopefully they'll have insured bonds. And so uh, we would cover that uh, payment. Uh, but there's also long-term uh, financial implications, and it could really impact the cash flows for years to come for a, a city. All right. So, Jonathan, which cities are the worst? As far as not being able to protect yeah. themselves? Well, uh, you know, honestly, a lot of big cities – just don't necessarily have the budget to really have a robust All IT right, infrastructure. All right, excuses aside, who's, who's really going to get you know absolutely attacked? Come on. I, I would I would expect a lot of cities in California to potentially be targeted. Really? I mean, if if I were doing it, that's where I would go after. Which cities? Uh, I mean, L.A., San Francisco. I mean, even though San Francisco has got the big you know Silicon Valley and everything else like that south of it. So have I mean, there have, have there been examples? Give us some examples. I've not really I wasn't aware of this issue of ransomware for cities. I've seen it you know for yeah. companies and ind- individuals. Have there been some examples where a, a major city's been? Yeah, ba- ba- Baltimore and Atlanta uh, recently, uh, and actually Albany had Albany. A, had a little bit of a, uh, an issue. And are these are back. these cities are they paying the ransomware or are they? Uh, so Baltimore and Atlanta did not, okay. um, and they're estimating their damages at about fifteen to twenty million dollars uh, from from, and they were offline for periods of, of wow. weeks and, and months at times for certain parts of it. All right, so Dave, from your perspective, do you go in and do you talk to the municipalities and say, "Hey, you guys, I would attack you if I were a ransomware." Uh, businessman, or, and you guys have to do something about it, or we're going to downgrade you. Yeah, so we're starting to look into uh, cyber readiness as part of our underwriting criteria. I mean, clearly, we need to look at a, a city. We, first of all, you know, the, one of the most uh, uh, easy things to look at is have they been attacked before? Um, people that get attacked get attacked again, and they seem not to learn the lessons often. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's certainly becoming part of our underwriting criteria. So what do you – it's interesting. I would think of some of the big cities, like you mentioned San Francisco, I would just assume that they would have the resources to have the defenses, but maybe some of the midsize and smaller issuers may not have it. Are you finding that it, it, it that's kind of the fact, or is it just hit or miss? Yeah, so in, in actually June of this year, there were three midsize Florida cities, for instance, which were hit. Um, two of them paid the ransom uh, using their insurance. And what's the dollar amount, roughly? I think they paid uh, 400000 one paid, and 600000 the other paid, huh. through their insurance. Yep. So some do it better than others. It's kind of hit or miss. So you guys, I would think from an insurance perspective – you really have to go in there and do the due diligence, right? Well, and we have to, or we have to make sure they have insurance themselves. Okay. So, Jonathan, is there a way to protect the cities 
aside from just telling people, don't be stupid, don't open stuff. <laughs> there is no patch for human stupidity. Right. Uh, that, so... I was also in a band called There Is No Patch for Human Stupidity <laughs> <Really>? in high school. <laughs> Go on. So, uh, I mean, there definitely are. There, there are, uh, as, as he was mentioning, cyber, cyber hygiene best practices out there. O- offline data backups are, are the best thing that, that I can recommend, you know, so that if somebody comes in and, and locks things up on you, that you have a way to be able to bring data back. Uh, offline being the key word there. I have seen instances where people will back it up to, you know, oh, I've got another, I've got my D drive. So you know, I'm just going to back it up there. Charlie from Long Island writing in, uh, are there <laughs> cases where the cities pay the ransom but don't get their data back? Yes. Sure, and and uh, uh, you know one of the things that uh, you need to look at is when you pay the the ransom to get some proof of life. You need to be able to prove that the uh, the criminals uh, are able to uh, uh, resurrect your data. Yeah, and, and I've proof also of seen life. <laughs> oh wow, we're taking this to a dark yeah. place. But go on. Well, th- they also have situations. Uh, I've worked with many organizations where they'll go and they'll give you a key to decrypt part of your data. Uh, but then you got to go back and pay again and pay more. So I had one one client that we worked with that uh, paid out about fifty thousand dollars initially, and it was ramped up all the way until he paid out Wait, two million dollars. What, what data is this? So what uh, kinds of data? In this case, he was an IT service provider, and it was all of his clients' data. So everything his clients, small businesses, used to operate HR data, financial data, operational data. I mean, you know, it depends what business that that they're in, but all of their information. So just imagine if somebody came in with with Bloomberg and took out, you know, all of your ability to connect up to the internet, to know who it was you were interviewing, all of your notes, all of your schedules, and anything that took to run your uh, to run your radio show, to run your business. If it was all locked up and you had no access to Paul, it, people would, would look through it and be like, "Oh, there are no scripts." <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, Jonathan, I mean, where are these actors coming from? These ransomware folks? Is it? I'm, I'm thinking state-sponsored North Korea, or is it just some guy in a? No, I, I wouldn't room. necessarily describe it as a, as a guy hiding somewhere. A lot of times, these are groups, but they're, the real popular thing now is ransomware as a service. So, I, as an organization or an individual, will set up a server for you somewhere. Most of them are out of Eastern. Europe. That's been my experience. Uh, But I can set up a server where you basically pay me and I will deliver the ransomware for you. I will wow. send it out to a group of emails, and a lot of the breaches that you hear about, so the Yahoo breach has been really popular. That's a harvesting of email addresses. I don't really care about the passwords. I don't want to get into your Yahoo account. What I want is the email that you'll respond yep. to. got it. Jonathan Cooch, thanks so much for joining us. Jonathan's a Senior Vice President of Strategy for Threat Quotient, and David McIntyre, Chief Technology Officer for Build America Mutual. Talk about cybersecurity at the municipal level. I didn't even recognize that as a risk. I was just thinking... Can they raise enough taxes to pay back the bonds? No patch for human stupidity. <laughs> That's that, the takeaway that for the day. That <laughs> really is going to be a T-shirt that you will see me wearing around the office. <laughs>